Minister of Education says there are currently 25 schools on the island that have not been completely repaired. Disaster Coordinator says they are now shifting their gears in preparation for the 2020 hurricane season. But first up, unions call for urgent emergency membership meeting. Those are the headlines from Monday, May the 25th, 2020. This is SSM Daily News. I'm Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. We have a packed newscast for you this evening, so let's get started. The Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Unions, comprising of the ABVO, the Y2, the NAPB, the SMCU, the WICOA, which is the Health Care Union, WIFO, ASERI, and WICSU PSU unions, attended an urgent emergency membership meeting earlier today, Monday, May the 25th, 2020, from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Little League Stadium in Phillipsburg. The objective of the meeting was to provide critical updates to their members concerning the cost-cutting measures and the conditions put forward by the Netherlands. All members that work in the public and private sector were asked to make a special effort to attend. The measures were taken to comply with the requisite health and safety protocols. Let's stop the thing. Let's stop the thing. You will remember. You will remember not too long ago in Parliament. Someone asked the minister, can you protect the union? So that threat that he told us. That fastball he tried to pass which we call scary tactic. Yes, it's no fear. It don't pass. And it is a ball, it is a strike. So, for the people that we represent, we need to stand together. Majority of time, my brothers and sisters, we don't stand together because the problem is not mine, it's yours, it's not mine, it's theirs, it's not theirs, it's yours. And as the news continues, still to come, Secretary General of ECYS gives update for the school bus safety for students. We'll have the details of that story and more with SXM Daily News Network. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. And as the news continues at this time, Secretary General of EYCS, Shermina Powell Richardson, gave an update on the reopening of the schools for the exam classes. The update was given at the EOC press conference, which was held on Saturday last, May the 23rd, 2020. The Secretary General said that they will be reopening in a phased manner and are looking at working with students from the exam classes as they have been faced with many challenges. We will be commencing, of course, I just said in a phased manner, and we are looking at uh, working with those students who are from the exam classes. 
as you would have known, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport has been faced with many challenges over the last few months due to the ongoing development of COVID-19. Uh, one of those challenges was the closure of the schools, of course, and the effect it will have on secondary education, particularly among students in their final years, in their final year. So all final exams were canceled or modified for 2020, but to ensure that students in their final year of secondary education within VSBO, HAVO and VARIO still get the opportunity to graduate this year, we have established a new criteria. I'm not going to go in, in depth with that aspect because we will be having an upcoming press conference with our Honorable Minister, so we would be able to give further detailed information on that. However, I'm here to, this evening to actually address the matter of the exam students returning to school in order to participate in their exams. We will be having, as of Monday the 25th, approximately 200 students participating from both MPC and Sundial School uh, in the exams from up until June 3rd. What we have done, of course, there were specific elements that had to be in place for this process to take place, and we developed what we call guidelines to be able to administer the final exams. These guidelines were prepared in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Public Health, in particular ESF 6, so that we would ensure the safety of the, children, the students, as well as we have in, incorporated and um, coordinated amongst our ministry, our education department, policy department, our policy, our exams division, and also inspection. I know that there, there are quite some questions maybe and concerns that are now in the minds of, of parents as it relates to the commencement tomorrow with the, um, the exams. And so the guidelines that we developed looked at the phased, a phased approach. So we assess the well-being of the students and the staff. We looked at the planning for the execution of the examination itself which included securing, of course, the classrooms, PPEs, as well as we looked at the bus transportation that would be necessary, the sanitizing of the school facilities. Then our second phase focuses on the transportation of the students going to the schools and they them being admitted at the school compound and what would be done, the supervision of the exams as well and the safe handling of the examination. And the third phase of that would also be the assessment of the experience of the student as well as the teachers. Now, I want to give um, some highlight of what took place on Friday in terms of the inspection in preparation for the exams to start on Monday the 25th. Health and hygiene inspections were carried out at both Svoboda schools, which are MPC and Sundial, on May 22nd in connection with the school exam. School management, uh, managers and so forth were commended for their hard work to meet the safety guidelines. And students, depending on the department they are from, will enter and depart through a designated gate of the school. This will be supervised by the school staff as well. The school buildings, the sections will be barred off to secure and maintain social distancing. So there will be no interdepartmental mixing of the students. All classrooms being used are equipped with a sink for frequent washing of hands and have adequate ventilation with quiet surroundings. The gym will also be used as an exam room and is also equipped with restrooms and sinks for washing hands and restroom breaks, etc. We have adjusted seating of six feet apart uh, to ensure and maintain the social distancing. Classrooms have also been, when we inspected, they were cleaned and sanitized and the surfaces were wiped. Restrooms will be also assigned to each barred off area of the department section. Uh, students will be escorted to the restrooms, which will have soap and water, etc. And restrooms will also be cleaned and sanitized after each restroom break. We also have custodial staff will be present for the cleaning and the sanitizing of the classrooms and the offices of all surfaces and touch points. And students and staff are requested to walk with their own mask 
water, snack, and hand sanitizer. Of course, we will have extra on hand in case there is a need for such. The school managers have also communicated all the necessary information and schedules pertaining to the school exams to parents and students alike. Parents are requested to drop off and pick up their children at their designated entry and departure gate on time. The Secretary General also elucidated about the school bus safety for students. She said they have had extensive discussions where guidelines were put in place by the Ministry of Teat. Of course, those who are not coming with their parents, we are expecting them to travel with the bus. And so we have had extensive discussions with the bus transportation where they will be adhering to the guidelines that are set out by the Ministry of TIAT. However, we have also agreed that we would have some additional guidelines as it pertains to students that we think would be necessary. And that would be that we are asking for all the buses to remain with their windows open and that students would be seated in every other row of the bus to maintain that social distancing. So those were the additional um, component, components of the guideline as it relates to the safety of our students. We also want to uh, indicate also that we have the buses were inspected uh, to this point. Seven buses were inspected. So this far also exceeds the supply uh, that it will be necessary. I mentioned earlier that we are looking at 200 students and we're estimating that there would be three trips per bus and pickup phase. And the time that we will be starting with the pickup is 6 a.m. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, the specifics about uh, the process of the commencement of the administering of the final exams and the students coming back to the compound to be able to sit such exams. And in more education-related news, there are currently 25 schools on the island that have not been completely repaired since the passage of Hurricane Irma, according to the Minister with Responsibility for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Dr. Anders Rodolf Samuel, adding that we have 19 or 20 schools at the World Bank in a program to be repaired. The minister also indicated that he has met with representatives of the World Bank, at which time the subject of school repairs was discussed. He also expressed annoyance with the lack of urgency by the World Bank in dealing with the situation. The minister was speaking during the program People's Voice on Sunday. What needs to be done? What is really pressing? What in the ministry would you say is a burning issue that needs to be dealt with. And it can be a personal issue, it can be an organizational issue, it can be an educational issue, it can be a cultural issue that, you know, that we are not treating our cultural icons in the right way. It can be logistics, but I would like to deal first with burning issues, okay. bottlenecks, problems. We get those out of the way and then we think about going forward okay because you if you you can't go forward if you don't solve the problems that you have mm. here now yeah one of the biggest issues we have on the island at the moment and i don't know if the public is realizing that we have 25 schools on the island that have not been completely repaired since hurricane Irma. Mm. we have 19 or 20 schools at the world bank that is in a program to be repaired I met with World Bank and I told World Bank, you are telling me the bid to repair will go out in December. And we are in May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So, so many months from now, the bid will go out. So if the bid will go out in December, Time the repair the of the school would not take place before March, April, May next year. That is for me unacceptable, mm -hmm. totally unacceptable unacceptable so what i said okay if you cannot do all give me six give me six that we're going to repair between now and august i need to get classrooms okay. we need to respect the teachers and the students and the area where they're getting yeah. education yeah. and in that way within a week and a half i have been able to submit to nrpb my proposal so i'll come back to your first question what are we actually doing mm -hmm. There is also another program to repair some other six schools 
And I am confident that I can get that rolling again. Very confident. Okay. I'm working at it. Because I really believe education should get that energy that it needs. It should. Okay. You know, and, and, and as I say this, I must tell you, I, I, I met some people, not met, I got to say meet because they're there. There are some persons working in the various departments and divisions of education. And if you see the work that they are rolling out, I take my hat off for them and I, yeah. I, I thank them. Now turning to our weather forecast for May the 25th, 2020, a dominant Atlantic high pressure system will maintain mostly gentle winds across the region. The moist and warm southeasterly wind flow may cause a few passing showers. Seas will peak at five feet before subsiding on Wednesday. The outlook through Wednesday midday, fairly to partly cloudy with a few local showers possible. Now let's turn to your three day forecast. And still to come, First Vice President of the Collectivité says 37% of requests were granted. We'll have the details of that story and more with SSM Daily News Return. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download WIB Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit wib-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And as SXM Daily News continues at this time, the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season will officially start on Monday, June the 1st. And despite the ongoing fight against the COVID-19 and as the island decision makers focus their attention on a safe and healthy reopening of the country, the Office of Disaster Management is shifting their gears and their preparations. According to the forecast, there are 60% chance of an above normal hurricane season, a 30% chance of an average season, and just a measly 10% chance of a below normal season. It is against this backdrop that National Disaster Coordinator Fire Chief Clive Richardson is urging residents to start preparing for what is forecasted to be an active season. Seeing that the Met Office and NOAA, NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, have predicted what we will have a, that we will have a very active hurricane season, we would like to ask everyone to start preparing and not wait for the last moment because we don't know when that one will come again. And therefore, we are asking the public to prepare, the fire chief said over the weekend. Pertaining to the upcoming hurricane season, which begin, will start at the 1st of June, we have already started with preparations. Um, we have requested all operational plans from the DF different ESF coordinators. Um, DCOM has already started publishing PSA um, newspaper, publishing um, um, ads in the newspaper pertaining to preparations for the hurricane season. PSAs have been created by DCOM to also start um, pre um, sending out on the radio stations. Um, we are also busy um, looking into if we will do a HUREX training this year again, because we have some new recruits and there's a new military contingency coming in so that they will get a custom of working together with the different entities. And there's a planned ES EOC meeting specifically for the hurricane season planned for next week. So that is also being um, part of the preparations for the hurricane season 2020. Um, we also I would like to ask the public to also start preparation. I know we are still busy with COVID-19, but seeing that um, 
the Met Office and, and NOAA has predicted that we are very active hurricane season. We'd like to ask the public and everyone to start preparing and not wait for the last moment because we don't know when that one will come again. And therefore, we are asking the public to also prepare. Also, pertaining to the hurricane passes, we are awaiting the opening of government because there are certain documentation that has to be acquired to be able to request your hurricane pass. So as soon as the governmental of structure is back in place and these documents can be acquired, we will start with um, the hurricane passes. But this week, this coming week, we will release more information pertaining to that. And in news now from Friends St. Martin, as Friends St. Martin tries to get back to business, First Vice President of the Collectivité, Valerie Damaso, says that out of the 1,248 applications that were submitted for the Solidarity Fund, 826 requests were processed and 305 were accepted. That makes 37% of the request that was granted. She expounds. To date, the feedback we have from the Public Finance Department reports that 1,248 applications have been submitted for the Solidarity Fund. Out of those applications, 826 requests were processed, 305 accepted, hence 37% of the requests granted. 157 requests are awaiting processing, hence 19% of the request. 364 requests were refused, hence 44% due to lack of filling corporate tax. Unregistered or unpaid DLCP or non-declaration of income in tax. However, all have declared on their honor that their fiscal and social situation are up to date. The files were investigated by the Public Finance Department. The national rule requires that businesses be up to date with their tax and social contributions. This is indeed a condition for receiving public aid. It seems that the control was done on the contribution of the 2019 business licenses. If businesses are up to date with their tax and social obligations or benefit from a delay of payment, I invite them to approach the St. Martin Public Finance Office in charge of examining requests. We are meeting with the head of the Public Finance Department tomorrow to discuss this matter. And still to come, Member of Parliament for the National Alliance queries Prime Minister on e-learning at home and the protocols for the daycare centers. We'll have the details of that story when SXM Daily News returns. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, Member of Parliament for the National Alliance, Angelique Remou, questioned the Prime Minister about e-learning at home at the bi-weekly briefing with the Prime Minister on May the 20th, 2020. The Member of Parliament asked what role has the telecommunication providers played in the sustainability of e-learning in these two months. The Member of Parliament also queried the Prime Minister about the daycare centers and the proper protocols that will have to be followed. And the Honorable Prime Minister, Sylvia Jacobs, responded. As telecommunications is represented in the EOC, once again, I would like to ask, what role has telecommunication providers played in the sustainability of e-learning these past two months besides their commitment to suspending this connection as far as it pertains to our students. As daycare centers form part of the reopening phases, did EOC put forth specific protocols and measures for these educational institutions to follow should they resume any educational service to our vulnerable little ones? As they do not know, as you, as you um, mentioned, Prime Minister, 
as they do not know how to practice the proper hygiene practices. So specifically for daycares, seeing their extensive vulnerability, would they have different protocols to follow to ensure and prevent, mitigate possible spread within their schools? What task force is busy with coming up with the proper protocols for the reopening of schools in August? Who is determining the protocols and the readiness of the schools to reopen? Is it the EOC or is it the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sports, or is it both? Who is leading the task of determining and ensuring that key measures are in place for the reopening of schools and this is primarily to find out, Honorable Prime Minister, through you, the chair, who takes the lead in order for us to know who we can hold accountable in this. As far as telecom is concerned, I don't have the info at hand. I do know that the telecoms were in deliberation with the education ministry to ensure that vulnerable children who did not, and teachers, who did not have internet connections could be connected. I do not know if it was actually finalized and realized to the fullest extent, but seeing that so many schools have opted to not reopen, I am assuming so that that connection was made or done. If the member of parliament knows of schools or teachers or children that are functioning or expected to function in this new e-learning reality, seeing that the majority of schools, even some of the exam classes have opted to stay home that and learn from home, that um, the MP should pass that information on to me and I can get it to the minister or directly to the minister as he is dealing directly with school boards together with the, um, I believe their abbreviation is the SEMC. So they have an established emergency um, disaster management team that has been working since 2017 on disaster preparedness within the schools and how to go between as it relates to the disaster response from the ministry, as well to be able to explain what the guidelines are. And it should be known also that the Ministry of VSR are the ones that do inspector inspections for daycare centers and not education. They are considered, they are not within the education legislation, so they fall within youth care, and that goes to um, VSA. I am Valerie Von Putten, and just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of SXM Daily News Team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.